Oh my goodness, what's going on people? We are out of quarantine. Well, we're, we're, uh, we're in a weird time right now. We are uh, taking a risk to run this one, the Respawn Recap. Uh, hello, this is Nick, my name is Jake. We hope you guys are all doing well, breaking down the craziest, nerdiest news of this past week. We hope you all enjoy. We took a health risk to be here. Let's uh, let's make it worth it, okay? It's good to see you again, at least. It's good, it's good to see you too. Let's <laughs> run it up. Nicholas, Nicholas, we... Yeah, I was knew, you knew you were to start with that, dude. All right, all right, sorry. <laughs> we have talked a lot about Phase Clan. We've talked a lot about Tifu. This past week, we had a great thing. That was actually a, a gift from Tifu to Banks, which is something we, I honestly think is underrated. It was actually Definitely. Tom Brady's kids who knew of Tifu. Tifu reached out to Tom Brady. His kids had already known him, so those two kind of connect a little bit. And before you know it, Tifu is actually setting up a little, a little talking between Banks and his childhood idol or slash person he refers to as a god, that being Tom Brady. And amidst all of this, of course, the ongoing lawsuit, which should be done sometime soon. You know, my first take when I heard this happen and we covered it, it just, I don't know if we're ever gonna see this kind of friendship or dynamic between right. two figures ever. Out of like kind of nowhere too, like after like everything that happened and then it's like, boom. Here's Tom Brady for you. Yeah. My favorite man. And I think we've, we've seen glimpses of these two together. They've been partying together, but not really many people have been talking about it. You know, even when we post the videos, people are like, whoa, this is kind of weird. And then it just continues and it kind of even snowballs to the biggest gift of all time. And several times throughout that video, you hear Banks say like, all thanks to Tifu, like 10 out of 10 guy. Meanwhile, like four, five, six months earlier, dropping F-bombs, right. you know, obviously a very, very heated relationship. It's just, that's what I'm saying, like out of nowhere. And I'm just like, oh. Sick. Also, 10 out of 10 kids. Can't forget those. I mean, yeah, but, but, it, but it also makes you think back as well to like something that we talked about last week was Nate Shot and Nick Merckx. And so it's two polar opposites. Obviously, both big controversies. 5% contract, uh, Nate Shot potentially screwing out Nick Merckx. And then we have Tifu, or vice versa with FaZe Clan, one of them screwing each other. Yeah, it's a screwing going on either way. <laughs> two gigantic controversies. These two, Nate Shot and Nick Merckx, not making up. Not a chance. Tifu and Banks are giving each other Dude, gifts. They have already made hanging it out. out. <laughs> party. So I, I, I do respect it. I think it makes great news. Uh, just kind of it, it just the build up. The lawsuit is over soon, and it kind of just builds up to what the heck is going to happen after all of that's done. Jakey, Jakey, Jakey. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start out the same people, way. People, people are gonna watch this and think, "What the? These guys are freaking nuts!" Just we're in, we're already infected. What do you gotta tell me, Nick? Oh man, I got a whole bunch to tell you. Uh, did you watch the video about the? Uh, I the did. Edit? Oh, which one? I, I watched I wasn't yours. Even saying it. I watched yours. Okay. I know the topic, you dingus. Okay, I know, I know. The NA LCS Player Association. They voted. About two thirds of them voted to not continue playing the spring split online, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that, actually, you? Like, what is your take on that immediately? Like, being in their position, if you were them, would you want to do it, or would you want to just cancel the split? I mean, I thought it was wild. If you guys have not seen Nick's video on this, uh, near two-thirds of players, which did include Academy players too, it right? Did, it did, yeah. It's so hard because we, we don't see this in any other eSport, right? We've talked about player associations, but now at League of Legends, we see these players voting one way, and Riot's like, now nah, we're gonna play anyway. So right. going directly against the player association, which for, there's so many big arguments that it invalidates the player association. They don't really have power in this circumstance, which is wild. The main point of your video though, being the fact these players are so highly paid and it makes it so debatable because a lot of them do not wanna play for a variety of reasons, whether they wanna go home, their fear of infection, or they're just, you know, some of them are probably a bit lazy, don't wanna finish out a split that's worthless. It's such a wild talking point and I wish we had a wider audience in League of Legends because if this was any other eSport, you know, Fortnite, CSGO, it would be, what it, it'd be gigantic. Yeah. Um, and so to your point as well, you've also mentioned in your video, these guys are being paid so much, but it's so hard. Like if, if they have legitimate fears, I can't judge them for that. Exactly. I can't blame them at all either. I understand like, you know, empathy, right? Just put yourself in their head and just like, you know, I don't want to get infected either. Yeah. But I like money too. And you don't know, <laughs> we don't know how serious this could be. Uh, you know, we have to do the podcast with Zan. Zan comes in the office once a week now during this quarantine. He's really fearful of it, and rightfully so. If he lives with older people, we don't know the struggles these players are going through. So I think, and you put that really well together in your video, we don't know what side to take because there are so many debatable sides. Um, it seems it's going to be played out either way. I would hate, we'll leave it off on this. I would hate to see they play it out now and we're gonna see a player contract it somehow. I pray that it does not. Because then it might spell some even bigger trouble for Riot. Uh, everyone's talking about it. Every time Epic Games steps up, 
Uh, this, in this case, you know, with some bands, we actually have four Fortnite Pros bands. You know, I say it a lot, and I say a lot of things a lot, actually, the one-liners. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's so weird that in this eSport, we don't see this elsewhere. Just four players outright banned for 60 days is not a very common thing to be happening. If you guys did not see it, four Fortnite Pro players competing in the FNCS, it was actually two duos have been handed 60 day bans for teaming and colluding, using each other to actually rack up storm surge damage to avoid late game damage. If you're not a Fortnite player, you might not understand that. All you need to know is they broke the rules. They are now being punished for breaking said rules. People freaking out about this because there was actually quite a few players out there saying the 60 day ban was too harsh. And even a few players saying they didn't cheat at all. So, Do I think 60 days is too long or too hard? I mean, yeah, what do you think about 60 days? Oh man, I, I think that's generous. And, and, like you came into that tournament very willingly, like very knowing that generous you in terms that, that of merciful, should, as if it was it, merciful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I, I think that I don't want to say that they should have been like permanently banned. You know, that's not for me to decide. But like, yeah. but I will say that like sixty days, like. You came into this tournament knowing the rules. Mm -hmm. You were playing this tournament knowing the rules, knowing what you were doing is wrong. And it's like, you're kind of a liability at that point to be allowed into future tournaments. And you know, you're not sure if they're gonna be doing the same thing again. So it's like, 60 days is two months. You can come back in two months. You're and, 15 and years old, 60 years, also that's literally nothing. Yes. Uh, there's so many arguments to take with this one, but you, then you compare it to a guy like Jarvis, who obviously was you know, using third party software well, yeah, in pugs, the, actually, and he gets banned for life. Two. And like he he's just... never gonna be able to play again, and you have players. <laughs> but these guys were playing for cash. You you know the CS:GO I buy power situation, where they all you know they threw they threw games for a couple hundred bucks a piece. These guys, by the way, a couple of them were top placers in the event. They, they were playing for cash on the line, way more cash than the I buy power guys were playing for yep. when they fixed. And these guys like... get two months. It's a slap on the wrist. And I guess my overall thought is it, it's an okay. I'm okay with this because in the past, Epic Games has banned them even lighter. I think two months, is, two months is fine. I think to your point, it could be a lot worse. And I think honestly going forward, we just, we're gonna see a lot of these Fortnite pros finally grow up and realize, okay, breaking the rules has repercussions. That, that is something worth mentioning too, is just their age and it's like, you know, they're younger. It's like not quite in like the right mindset, you know, not yet. they haven't quite matured there. But I guess that's why like the 60 days can be kind of acceptable. But then you compare it to Jarvis still, and it's, yeah, like, it's, that, like, that what it's is, like, what? That is it. Come on. Epic Games <laughs> can't do anything right in the public eye, but at least they're trying their best. <laughs> I sometimes feel bad because every time we bring up Mixer, it's nothing really good. Yeah. But I would, lo I would love to share something good about them once they do something yeah. good. Uh, the latest in the news <laughs> for a platform like Mixer is a lot of the jokes we see growing around them, and something I kind of just. Me and Pete, cameraman, we're going back and forth about this over the past few months. You know, I compare it to this. When we first announced Ninja going to Mixer and then Shroud, did you really see, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, did you see any negativity around that at all? When they first announced the gigantic move away from Twitch to Mixer? From Shroud going to Mixer? Or Ninja to going to Mixer? Did yes. You, you saw negativity? Yes. Everyone thought it was a bad idea. Really? Yes. Huh. Dr. Disrespect, like, a lot of big streamers were like, I mean, I, that's my main example right there, actually. But I feel like a lot of people, like, I, I thought that we looked at it ourselves and were just like, eh, he's moving from the biggest streaming platform in the world to one that is just now developing, and he already has a huge viewer view base over there, and he's throwing that all away. Because my basis was, at the time, at the very, very moment they announced, no one was no one was saying, oh, this is, this is like, bad. Everyone, to me, was saying, this is huge. This could be gigantic. And sure. then, and the following months after, when we saw the short fall off of viewership, then we saw Dr. Disc kind of start the train of, oh my God, like you went from 40K viewers concurrent for both Shroud and Ninja to like five or six or uh, 10 or whatever it might be at the time. So for yeah. me, I look back to like the, the, the days following the announcements, there was seemingly no negativity. Shortly after there was, sure. okay. and that negativity continues to grow over the past couple of months as that viewership has certainly stagnated and we've only come out with bad news ever since. <laughs> and so Dr. Disc kind of starts it, reverse two, and he's continued it for sure. Definitely. Reverse 2K <laughs> has made comments. Now we have Slasher, you know, he makes uh, every tweet he says. His are some of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> like so-and-so is dead, almost like Mixer's platform, whatever it might be. <laughs> and then latest, we actually have Cloaksy making jokes. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, do you think that these jokes are ultimately kind of a, a sign of the times of this maybe being a quick end for a platform like Mixer. 
They've been around for a while. I would say they're growing with increasing form. Has this platform almost become not so much a streaming platform, but now it's kind of like it's a punchline. It's a joke for <laughs> people to go to. They are kind of like on like a slippery slope, and they've, they've been on like that slope, just kind of going down like over time. Yeah. Right? And man, I, I I don't know how to answer your question. Like yes, I, I think <laughs> that uh, the, the decline of Mixer is going to kind of continue, but. I'm wondering when like it'll, it'll reach a point where like Shroud and Ninja actually decide to do something about it if they, yes. they, they will need to eventually, right? If they want to continue if they want to continue, career, yeah. like, into the years. So like, and I imagine that they will want to do that. Yeah. So there will come a point and I feel like it's not going to be like that far away. I feel like it'll- This year sometime? Maybe this year? Like, is that is that too harsh to say or maybe next year? No, I, I think that a lot of people would agree this year or sometime next year. And again, I guess to, to fill off the point, we don't see these jokes being made about YouTube. Mixer is the is the name they put in that punch. And the latest and craziest, you can compare this to, uh, I don't know, any eSport out there who's changed the number of players required. Uh, one of them most recently, that obviously being Call of Duty. Uh, Strauss maybe trying to make those same changes for a game like CSGO. Uh, it was actually announced this past week they're signing a permanent sixth member, the first team that's actually of like a top caliber to do this. And uh, it seems they have the intentions to actually have the coach, that being Zonic, one of the most well-known and probably arguably the best coach in all of esports, they said, or uh, have hinted at the fact he will actually choose, you know, when players play or when they sub in and sub out. And so, I, I don't know, I kind of liken this to you more of your fields like Rainbow Six. Can you imagine teams out there all of a sudden almost trying to crack the meta and saying, hey, your game is so-and-so, let's add a player that at any point in time, if another player is struggling, we're just gonna swap them right out, whether it be via half, or of course, so many games have different elements of when players can sub in and out. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Astralis almost trying to break the game. That's something that Overwatch does too. Like some rosters, you will see like a oh, butt yeah. ton of people, like a freaking and, Major uh, League Baseball I, team. I think even during, uh, I want to say, like the Overwatch Grand Finals, um, when San Francisco Shock was playing against the the Titans, I'm pretty sure they ended up actually switching out rosters like every other game. Really? Like, like they had uh, not like the entire roster, but they switched out like a few people, and they would just like alternate like that, and they still did very well actually too but yeah and I think it's a bit different when it comes to comparing anything to overwatch because with the given metas the different roles the different yeah, I mean true. so many different what are they, are they called champs or heroes um they're heroes in overwatch I mean <laughs> so many different heroes to, there are so many different ways to specialize in a game like overwatch as compared to a standard game like call of duty and CSGO that have very limited roles that's a fair point usually well. rifle or sniper I would say is a kind of a, a for FPS games that's usually a uh, so it's, it's very weird, and I think Slasher made note of what you said as well with like um, maybe sometimes League of Legends team, but more specifically Overwatch team is making use of these subs. But can these FPS titles, you know, can they actually make it worth it? We're seeing the same struggles in Call of Duty where these teams have, yes, they've actually signed substitute players because they have had to, but no teams have interchanged their subs during series or during the same weekend. Yeah. I think we've seen a lot of these teams like five-man rosters because of chemistry. And you don't want to switch someone out time and time again because then your strats change and all, you know, things can change so drastically. And so I don't know, I mean, obviously, this could be the future, but I don't know if it's the now. And I don't know if any other teams can afford or actually want to do That's this. A, that is also a good point. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> That's a, like a whole other paycheck right there. Yeah, I mean, did. can yeah. you imagine? We already got teams in the in the bubble and kind of, you know, in debt right now. Yeah. Let's, let's tack on another 20%. So I don't know if it's the future, but I, I do kind of appreciate it because, you know, if this is the next wave, everyone wants to be the first, right? We'll just see if it actually is the next wave. Yeah. As per usual, we hope you guys are all being safe and sound there at home. We're safe and sound here, and usually Nick's at home. If you guys have been catching his videos, I've been in the office, and he's been at his house. We all hope you guys <laughs> take care. Nick, do you want to say any words to our kind viewers? Um, I miss you guys. <laughs> I miss looking at this camera instead, instead of the one of at home. <laughs> Nick's, <laughs> Nick's been having some camera issues at home, but uh, uh, we'll get past them. Thank you all for watching, guys. Seriously, stay safe. Stay away from people. Trust nobody, okay? Don't trust your family. Don't trust your friends. They're all... Um, anyway, we'll see you guys back here same time next week for the Respawn Recap. Enjoy your safe time. Be safe, gamers. Safe.